Hello guys, it's Mashtech here. Today we're gonna take a look to the Kinhank MP100, a Intel Alder Lake N powered mini PC, and answer the question on how it performs in terms of emulation power. Kinhank is an established brand in the retro gaming market and known for famous devices like the Super Console X, for example. The MP100 has a quad-core Intel processor running on up to 3.4 GHz and comes with 8 GB DDR5 RAM, what sounds very promising in terms of emulation performance. The console supports over 50 emulation systems and comes with a game collection of more than 66,000 pre-installed games. It claims to emulate systems like N64, Sega Dreamcast, Wii, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 2, Wii U, Switch and even PlayStation 3. For sure, we're gonna check all these systems out with some gameplay and see how well it really performs. After a quick unboxing, we'll do some benchmarking and jump right into the gameplay. After that part, I'll show you some performance optimizations and tweaks and open the device to have a closer look to the internals. Enjoy! The package includes a 12 volts power adapter with 36 watts, a 1.5 meter long HDMI cable, a user manual in English, the MP100 mini PC and a surprisingly good wireless controller that we're gonna take a look on separately. On the backside we find the 12 volts power socket, two gigabit ethernet ports, a display port and the HDMI out port. So you can actually use the device with multiple screens. The right hand side features a micro SD card slot and airflow openings. Same on the left hand side, but instead of the SD card slot, we find a Kensington lock here. On the front side, we have a 3.5mm audio jack and a high speed USB 3.0 port and three additional USB 2.0 ports to connect some controllers. Here we also find the LED backlighted power button and a hole to reset the device. There are rubber pads installed to the four corners on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the surface underneath it and gives the device a solid and secured stand. Against my expectation the housing of the MP100 isn't made of aluminium but some matte finished plastic that is invulnerable to fingerprints. With a power consumption of only 6 watts, the CPU works absolutely silent and doesn't really get hot. Beside that, it comes with Bluetooth 4.2 and supports dual band Wi-Fi for 2.4 and 5 GHz networks. As already mentioned, the package also includes a wireless controller from a different brand called GameSir. It comes in a PS3 controller style and features a 3-dimensional vibration motor what really is a cool feature to give you some haptical feedback in games. So let's open up its cage and check out what's inside. In the package we have the controller, a 1.8 meter long micro USB connector cable to charge the device, the 2.4 GHz wireless dongle and a user manual that explains how to pair it. The controller itself is made of matte finished plastic that has a slightly rough texture on it what allows no fingerprints and gives a good grip. It also comes with two analog and two digital shoulder buttons on the back and two analog joysticks that are rubbered on their top to give you even more grip on them. The D-pad and action buttons are easy to press and have defined pressure points. In the middle of the controller we find the start and select buttons as well as a turbo and clear button and a PS3 style connect button. The only downside to me is the micro USB port to charge the device. Nowadays I'd expect a USB Type-C port here. All in all, it's a decent controller and I'm glad Kinhang includes it to the package. But now let's start and hook up the MP100 to a monitor, plug in the power supply, connect a wireless keyboard slash touchpad combo and power up the device. 
the mini PC starts into the operating system what actually is a licensed Windows 11 Pro version. Let's finally plug in the dongle and pair the controller by pressing the R1 plus X plus home button for 2 seconds. The LEDs will shortly flash in between red and blue indicating that the controller now is in pairing mode and instantly connect to the console. Now that we're ready to check out some games, let's start right into RetroBet. Beforehand, I already tweaked a few settings for maximum performance that I will show you later in this video. Let's crawl through the emulator list and check out what systems are supported. We have Arcade, the Atari systems, Coleco Vision and C64, Capcom 1, 2 and 3, Dreamcast, Game & Watch, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, GameCube, Sega Genesis, Atari Lynx, MAME, Sega Mega Drive, what seems kind of redundant since we already had Sega Genesis, Turbograph X, Neo Geo, N64, NES, Open Beats of Rage, PS1, PS2 and PS3 and PlayStation Portable, a section for ported games, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, Wii and Wii U, WonderSwan and Sinclair ZX Spectrum only to name some of the interesting systems. You can enter an emulation system by pressing the A button on your controller. Here we can scroll through the list of games showing up with their box art and preview videos and leave it again with a press on the B button. Now let's do some gameplay and check out the performance by leveling up from easy to more demanding systems starting with Super Mario World on the SNES. Actually, I didn't expect any problems with the Super Nintendo emulation since the power of the MP100 is more than sufficient. Super Mario World and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island run smooth without any problems. Any SNES game I tried so far just ran fine. I'd give this system a 5 out of 5 stars. I'll skip showing you any lower demanding systems than SNES since they all just run absolutely great and rather focus on more demanding systems. So let's go the next step and try some more demanding system like Sega Dreamcast. Retro gaming handhelds with a RK3326 chip already struggle with titles like Crazy Taxi what is no problem for the N100 CPU on this mini PC. Same goes with Marvel vs Capcom Clash of Superheroes. This game was a lot of fun to play especially with the controller that came with the package. I'd like to point your attention to the sidebars in the emulator that adapt to the game you play. I really like this attention for detail and in my opinion it makes a difference in your gameplay experience. Sega Dreamcast also gets 5 out of 5 stars for its emulation performance. Let's jump over to a similar emulation level and check out the N64 performance. I started with Mario Kart 64 what ran as smooth as I expected and it was fun to play this classic. So I tried Wave Race next and already experienced a few hiccup in video and sound especially in the pre-game menu. The game itself was smooth and I didn't recognize any interrupts while playing. Still, I wanted to push this a little further and try GoldenEye 007, the most demanding title I know for N64 emulation. And well, I actually was disappointed by the emulation performance of this title since I didn't expect that the system already would struggle at this level. I think this is either an issue of the emulator or the emulation settings. But I want to show you what you get out of the box. In a follow up video I like to address these problems and show you how to improve the situation. Since demanding titles already exceed the emulation limits on the N64, I'd rate the gaming experience only to 2 out of 5 stars. The next system on my list was PlayStation 1. I tried quite a few titles here and was super happy with the overall performance. The first game I tested was Crash Bandicoot. Next, I played Spyro Year of the Dragon.
Even games like Wipeout or Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 were no problem for the MP100 Mini PC. I'm pretty sure these systems could easily be scaled up for even better graphics without any loss of performance. Therefore, PlayStation 1 gets a full 5 out of 5 stars rating from me. Now let's take a look at PlayStation 2 next. In terms of emulation power requirements, I didn't expect full performance here. But PlayStation 2 emulation was surprisingly good on this system when I did my first test with Burnout 3 takedown. No audio glitches, no video stuttering, just smooth performance and awesome graphics. So I tried Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time next. And also here the system had no problem emulating the game in full speed. Next game on my PS2 list was Tekken 5. As you can see, it works absolutely fine and another thing I really like about the PS2 gameplay was the rumble support with the game controller, especially with the Tekken gameplay. Finally, I was trying to find a more demanding PS2 title and tested GTA San Andreas. But even this title wasn't able to push the system to its limits and ran just fine. As last game I played God of War for PlayStation 2. Since this was the most demanding title for PS2 I found and the fact that the system handles it as smooth as hot butter, I decided to give PS2 emulation on the system a 5 out of 5 stars. Let's continue with PSP emulation and start into a low demanding title, Metal Slug Anthology. As expected, the game just runs smooth and since I'm a big fan of the Metal Slug series, I had a lot of fun playing this game. So let's jump right over to a more demanding title and play some God of War, Chains of Olympus. It just played as smooth as Metal Slug and had no performance problems even though it ran upscaled with much better graphics for bigger screens. Finally, I tested Need for Speed Most Wanted for the PSP. Like all other games before, it ran absolutely smooth with awesome graphics. PSP emulation gets a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me. Let's go a step further and try some PS3 gameplay. Therefore, we start into Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Honestly, I expected a slideshow for PS3 emulation and was very surprised that this game actually ran in a playable speed without any lags in audio or video. I wish I could try a few more games for this console, but the PS3 section only came with that one title. But since Castlevania already is a more demanding game, I'd give PS3 emulation on the MP100 a 4 out of 5 stars only because I couldn't test more games. Now let's test a few more young age Nintendo consoles, starting with Nintendo Wii and one of its classics, Mario Kart. In the menu I already experienced some audio stuttering, so I didn't expect any crazy performance for the gameplay. Actually, the game runs at about 25 frames per second, what is still playable, but the game kept stuttering all over the time even though it was hardly recognizable. So next I tried Super Smash Bros Brawl and this title already played a lot better. No sound or video glitches. The main issue for me here was just my horrible gameplay because I just suck at this game as you can clearly see on the screen here. All in all I give Wii emulation a 4 out of 5 stars. Let's take a look at Wii U emulation now. Since it only came with Mario Kart 8, this was the only title I could test on the system. 
In a follow-up video I want to test a few more games for it. But now let's start right into Mario Kart and check out the performance on the system. Actually I was surprised how well it performed on this title. Mario Kart 8 is definitely not an easy game to emulate and so I was very impressed. No audio or video glitches. It just felt like the emulation was either running on about 25 frames per second only or some frame skip was enabled. But still, a more demanding Wii U game like Mario Kart on this mini PC wasn't something I'd expected. Without the option to test any further games, I'd rate Wii U gameplay on the MP100 to 4 out of 5 stars. Now let's finally come to the most interesting system in terms of emulation power to me, Nintendo Switch emulation. This is Nintendo's up-to-date system, so I was very curious to see how the MP100 performs on emulation here. The first game I tried was Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I had to update the Yuzu emulator to its latest version as well as the Switch firmware to 18.0 and install the latest keys in version 17.0.1 to play this game. I also had to add it on my own since Kinhang didn't come along with it. The gameplay is mainly slow on this title, as you can see here. From time to time it speeds up but falls back to like slow motion speed and so didn't give me a good gameplay experience. Still I have to say, there was no sound issues in game and even though it runs slower, it was still playable. So I switched over to a less demanding title and tested ARMS for the Nintendo Switch. This game came pre-installed with the MP100 and so I expected it to be more playable. The game felt much smoother than Super Mario Bros. Wonder but had a few hiccups in sound and video. But these were only at the beginning of a round. After a few loading interrupts, it ran almost perfect. I also experimented with some emulator settings and was able to get it run smoothly after reducing the graphics from 1080p to 720p. So finally I downloaded a very less demanding title for the Switch and got Mario vs Donkey Kong. I played this game a lot with my son who loves the easy gameplay and the little puzzles you have to solve to succeed the levels. Mario vs Donkey Kong runs perfect on the MP100 and the installed emulator also supports local multiplayer gameplay with another Bluetooth controller I paired with the system. For more gameplay experience, the emulator also supports the rumble feature for connected controllers that gives you a vibration feedback in games. Nintendo Switch emulation gets 3 out of 5 stars from me, what still is 2 stars more than I expected. One last thing to mention, thanks to the Windows OS we're also able to play low demanding PC games like Asphalt 9 Legends in full speed. With the game controller input you really get some console feeling for PC games. To play games with more players, you can simply connect further USB controllers to the front or bind them via Bluetooth. If you like to connect a Bluetooth controller, simply activate the pairing mode on it and open the Windows settings. Choose Bluetooth and devices from the list and click on the big plus symbol over here to add a new device. To connect your controller, choose the first option and the system will search for your controller. As you can see, it found a Xbox wireless controller, so simply click on it to start the connection process. One second later, the connection is established and your device is ready to go. Now let me give you a few tweaks to your hand. Since RetroBat is running on top of Windows, we want to optimize the system for this foreground application. Therefore, open the Windows settings again and search for the keyword performance. The first result is the game mode settings. Click on it and ensure that Windows is running in game mode. This will disable all unnecessary background services to provide maximum resources for playing. At the game mode section we can also make some adjustments for graphically demanding applications. 
Click on Graphics and choose Retrobat from the list. Go to Options and set them to High Performance. Click on Save to store your changes. As another tweak, we want to adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Here we set the option to adjust for best performance. This will mainly disable most visual effects in order to save some CPU power and RAM for applications. After that, I was running some benchmarks to get a feeling for the overall system performance. First, I tested the SSD speed using AS SSD benchmark. The SSD reads and writes data with about 450 to 500 megabyte per second, what ain't a top score, but still is fast enough to quickly load Retrobat and its emulators. As another test, I started 3D Mark times by. That resulted in 329 points for graphics and 1949 points in CPU score. Now finally, let's open up the device and take a look to its internals. I was glad to see that Kinhank installed a Western Digital hard drive to the MP100. WD is a reliable brand that gave me a good feeling about the data persistency on this device. The internal NVMe SSD seems to be of some Chinese brand that I never heard about, so I can't say much about it except the scores I measured with the benchmark. Let's close the device and come to my conclusion. For a mini PC with reduced energy consumption, the MP100 really does a great job on emulation. I was very impressed on its emulation power when it comes to systems like PS2 or Nintendo Switch. Actually, I didn't expect these systems to run as good as this little PC emulates them. For the price of around $300, you don't just get a decent retro gaming console with a big bunch of pre-installed games, but also the option to use it as a home PC thanks to the pre-installed Windows 11 Pro OS. For my reasons, I would get rid of Windows and install Batocera to this device, still using the big set of games the MP100 comes along with. This would remove the overhead of a host system and solve the problem of needing a keyboard or mouse on this device by just running a retro gaming dedicated operating system. By the way, Kinhank was kind enough to provide me an exclusive coupon code for you guys. Use the code MASHTAG to save $60 off your order. This will reduce the price to only $258. So if you're interested in this mini PC, check it out at www.kinhank-retrogame.com or use the direct link in the description below. That's all I can tell you about the MP100. If you have any further questions or suggestions about this device, like a deep dive video where we take a closer look to the emulation settings and tweaks, let me know in the comments below. And subscribe to the channel today or we might never see each other again. Thanks for watching, bye.